So welcome back to another episode, and today I've dragged out all of my Genesis games, and I've never done this before. I've taken them all off the shelf here, they've been spread all throughout the games room, and I've collected them all in one place finally. In my entire life, I've never had them in one place before. And I'm just kind of going, going to go through them and talk about them and what I like about them and why I have this collection. I, I gotta admit, yes, this is not the biggest collection in the world, and it's not meant to be. It's my personal collection. Uh, and these are games that have meant something to me. I bought them since 1989, when the Genesis came out, and started buying games regularly back then, and I, I played all of these games. That's the thing. I, play, I finished most of them as well. So that's why this collection is very personal to me, and I really enjoy it. Any games that I should check out, trust me, I really know all the games that I'm missing in my collection. There's a lot that I would like to have, but I just can't afford now because of the high prices of retro games and that's the unfortunate thing about being a collector now. And this is in no particular order because they're all over the place here, but I will start with the first game right here. And it was a pack-in with the Genesis, and that was Altered Beast. Uh, I've talked about it before. I saw it in an arcade. I was blown away by it. And to have a home console version of it was awesome. And this is the best home console version of Altered Beast. And it blew me away Christmas morning when I got it for the half an hour it took for me to finish the game. Thank God it was a pack-in game, so that's one good thing. Next up, that Christmas morning, I also got Last Battle. And it was a, you know, it was like a year later I realized, I'm like, oh my god, this is Fist of the North Star. I don't know why I didn't realize that. Maybe because they didn't call it that over here. So I thought, oh, is this some generic fighting game thing that I don't know about? But no, it's based on Fist of the North Star from Japan, an anime and manga series, and a really popular one. And this is a great version of the game. I love this game, love the music. But they removed the blood from this version, unfortunately. So Christmas morning, my friend Andrew came over, and he had gotten a Genesis as well. And he had got Space Harrier 2. And it was cool because my Genesis was just first hooked up. I had my initial games. And then he brought over this, so it was like, Oh my god, all these incredible games Christmas morning, and I loved the 3D in this game. It really showed what the Genesis could do with scaling. I was blown away at the effects. I couldn't believe the strobing effects when you were flying through the Fantasy Zone. Now, just after Christmas, I mentioned this as being one of my favorite Genesis games. I got this after Christmas on my birthday. I got Revenge of Shinobi, and I got Alex Kid. One of them was okay, and one of them was the greatest Genesis game of all time to me personally. I loved Revenge of Shinobi. I've finished the game so many times, I couldn't even tell you. I've still got every single level memorized. I know where every power-up is. And Alex Kid, well, he was just Alex Kid. It wasn't a terrible game, but I finished Alex Kid really fast. Uh, Revenge of Shinobi took me a couple of months. Here we go, shooter games. It was a side-scrolling uh, shooter game. It was an overhead shooting game. And that was Thunder Force 2, and I really, really like this game. This game... I must have played this game for years because it was so difficult. Every time I'd almost get to the last level that I wouldn't and it had to start from the beginning again and it was a frustratingly awesome game. I loved it. Really great graphics. I like this game so much that I have two copies of it. I say Revenge of Shinobi is my favorite Genesis game, but Ghouls and Ghosts would be my second favorite. I really think so and I have two copies. One copy is very special to me, and I believe I believe it's this copy here. And that's the copy that I got from my friend down the road who first got a Genesis and we saw this at his place and we couldn't believe it. We're like, oh my god, you know, ghouls and ghosts, you know. We played ghosts and goblins and that was good in the NES and in the arcade, but uh, ghouls and ghosts took it to a different level. The, the levels, the graphics at the time, the music, the atmosphere. It was a perfect game and he, you know, years later came over and gave me his copy of the game and I really appreciated it. And this is just a copy that I got for myself when I didn't have his copy all those years later. So very meaningful to have that original copy. You cannot mention the Genesis without mentioning Forgotten Worlds by Capcom. And this was an arcade game, a side-scrolling action game that you could play two players and I think that was the big draw to this game. 
the one thing that I want to say is the uh, the Schwarzenegger-esque opening was so stupendous. The bosses, the graphics of the time were unreal. Like, the Genesis was really doing the arcade justice, and that's why we were loving the machine so much. And Forgotten Worlds, I had this game on almost every machine that it was ported to. And again, another copy of Forgotten Worlds. You can never have enough copies of Forgotten Worlds. Mystic Defender has a special place in my heart. I went down to my friend Angie's place and he had gone this game and we absolutely loved it. It is kind of a spiritual successor to Spellcaster on the Master System. And this is kind of a, it's a side view action game and it's kind of difficult. It's really kind of difficult. I remember Andrew struggling over this one over the couple of months. He lent it to me and I was struggling with it. But the music, the atmosphere, everything about it was top notch and a real classic game. I, whenever I hear the music, it takes me back down the road to Andrew's place. Golden Axe. This was the game that in every single magazine they were showing. I played it in the arcade. I loved it. I used to play it in my old 7-Eleven with my friends and we loved the game where you play as barbarians in, a, in an ancient world, you know, tackling monsters and, you know, demons and stuff like that. And it was so exciting, the lead up to this game. We're like, is it coming out? When's it coming out? When's it coming out? It finally came out and it lived up to the hype as being a great conversion of the arcade game for home consoles, and Golden Axe was a gigantic, I know it's hard to wrap your head around now, but Golden Axe was a gigantic game at the time, and it really lived up to the hype. When I got it, I, I did finish it, it was very easy to finish, but I played it multiple, multiple times. Here's a game that really is more about my friend Andrew, and I'm gonna try to pronounce this here, I've never, I don't think I've ever got the exact pronunciation of it, Herzog Zwi, Zwi? Uh, <laughs> So, this is like a strategy shoot 'em up type of game, and uh, I this this game is important for me that I'd always be at my friend Andrew's place watching him play it, and I really enjoyed his enthusiasm for it. I don't think I was as good at the game. I don't think I really got into it like he did, but I enjoyed his enthusiasm of it, and it's it's a really cool game. I think we always really loved the bad English in it. Now this is kind of a funny one. This is sad. The Super Thunder Blade was a game that I was really, you know, looking forward to. I was reading about it in, you know, every single magazine. I got it. I put it in Games That I Hate, one of my episodes of that. Check that one out. You know, just type in, like, Games That I Hate. This was one of them, and I really wanted to like this game, but the graphics, the controls, everything was working against me. But, as I said in the episode, super nostalgic. It's like, yeah, you basically play a Blue Thunder style helicopter going through a city, kind of like Space Harrier, but it just kind of was strobing towards you in such a ridiculous way that it's, it's a very confusing game to play for sure. Okay, I need to make some room here. This is a fun, this is a funny one, actually. My friend Mark at Classic Game Room, his favorite game is Truxton. And here's something that I'm gonna admit to Mark. I like Truxton, I really do. I It was one of the ones I went down the road when I was a kid and watched my friend play it, he had Truxton, and I was like, this, this is a great shooting game. It looked amazing, the graphics were stupendous at the time. But I bugged Mark for so long because I know it's his favorite game, so I always poke fun at him that how much Truxton sucks, where I'm gonna say today that Truxton does not suck, it's a really fun game. This, you know, it's so funny, Michael Jackson has passed away now, and he left a heck of a legacy. One of the things I'm so nostalgic about, and I paid a little bit of money for this, because I really wanted to own it. I played the arcade game, loved it. And don't you see that a lot of what's happening here? Most of these games were arcade games. Michael Jackson's Moonwalker. You know, <laughs> Michael! I love this game. It's so 1990s. Nothing encompasses the the 90s like Moonwalker did and Michael Jackson's career at the time. It doesn't matter what you think of him as a pop star, you liked him or disliked him. You cannot deny 
what uh, you know an effect on the 90s he really had and this video game that it even got made. It's surreal. It's such a weird thing. It's such a strange game. And with the little kids running around going, Michael. And you know, it's so funny. My wife always will be, will be doing something and she'll always say, she'll always go, Michael. It's so fun. So yeah, Michael Jackson's Moonwalker, hugely nostalgic game. Oh my goodness. Wonder Boy in Monster World. I remember going on a vacation with my parents and I picked up this game and I read the manual a thousand times in the back of the car and I came home and this is this is one thing I want to talk about with this game when I, we came home from that vacation and I finished the game so easily I finished it in a few days and I was like oh, I was so disappointed that I'd finished this game that I spent a little bit of money on back then I was like what it's over already where I've gone back to play this game now, and I've had a hell of a time playing it. It's really, really difficult for me now. I, I really maybe need to spend a bit more time with it, but boy, sometimes your reflexes and all that are a lot better when you're younger. Uh, this is an entire series. I'm just gonna grab them all here. And that is the Streets of Rage series. I One day I'll do a big, long episode. I talked about the first game a lot. This is my copy, signed by Yuzo Kishiro. I'm very careful with this copy of the game. I'm gonna put it over here right now. And then Streets of Rage 2 and 3. I gotta admit, 1 and 2 are legendary. 3 was okay. I remember having a, a you know, like a, a night with my friend Andrew where we, we rented the game. Rented the game and we had high hopes for it, but the music and everything just kind of threw us off. We didn't enjoy it like we did 1 and 2, but it's still a pretty good game. Next game is a bit rare. It's Alyssa Dragoon, and I don't know how I got two copies of it, but I have two copies of it. It's a really fun, underground, not well known, so, you know, side-scrolling action game. And it's really a lot of fun. You get a lot of crazy abilities in the game. The controls are okay. In some of these games, you know, don't hold up as well these days, but I think the game's still a classic game. I really enjoyed it. This was a really cool one. I went to a convention and uh, a you know, fan of the show came up to me and he gave me this game. He wanted to give me this game. And it's one of those cool moments when I was like, I forgot all about Midnight Resistance. I remember boring it off a friend of mine and playing it back in the day. And this is another side-scrolling action game, very much like Contra. And I loved it. I was like, oh my God, this is like Heavy Barrel. And it's a, I think it's a bit of a sequel to Heavy Barrel. And I, it's, this was an interesting one because I'd forgotten about it. You know, it's like one of those things you forget about a movie. And you're like, oh yeah, I forgot I watched that movie all those years ago. That was the same for Midnight Resistance, a really fun game. Wow, this is, this is a nostalgic one, not only for the game itself, but for the show. Exile. Exile was one of the first game series reviews I did back in the day. Oh my god, I look back on that episode now, I'm a little embarrassed about how I looked and sounded, but the enthusiasm was there for the Exile series. As much as it's like nine years later that I'm doing this episode today, Exile still holds up incredibly well, and I really, really uh, loved it. It's an action side-scrolling uh, RPG based in an Arabian-style world with anime graphics, and it's very easy, but your the time that you have with this game was really fun. I really can't say how much I loved the Arabian environments and the music, and all of that you know came together incredibly well. Renovation. Good old renovation back in the day. Oh my god, I love talking about this game and how much I hated it. Budokan couldn't stand the game. The hype was real. The hype was extraordinary. I talked about this game a few times in the show's history. <laughs> but I love it. I love it. It takes me back to the early 90s of the hype for this game and playing it and that summer not liking this but liking Final Fantasy 1 instead over a Genesis game which is unheard of but this is kind of like a, a martial arts game where you're, you're training all day and it doesn't matter how much you train all day you're gonna suck at this game this game is freaking hard and you can compete in a giant tournament and Oh my god, I said everything I need to say about this game. I think I put this in a Games I Hate episode as well. Now, I love RPGs on the Genesis. It's got some real classics, and that's what brings us to Shining in the Darkness. This was a game I was reading about in Die Hard Game Fan Magazine. 
and I was so hyped for it. Like, coming off Fantasy Star, the Fantasy Star series and 3D dungeons and dungeon exploring and going to towns, buying weapons, upgrading experience points, all that crap, all the crap I love. I couldn't wait for this game. And you know what? The funny thing is, when I played it, I thought it was okay. I'd overhyped myself or something. I It didn't really live up to what I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be a, a huge world and you could explore a lot of different things, but it's really one big dungeon and one town. And that's what kind of disappointed me with the game. Unfortunately, I, I did an episode on this one as well called, um, you know, I think it was like RPGs I tried to like, and I tried to like this game. I really did. I, I love the graphics too. I love the music. I love aesthetically everything about it, the care designs. But the game just wasn't for me. Now guys, you're gonna hate me, but I'm gonna have to cut the episode in half because this is gonna be so long. I got so many more games to to uh, go through here. And the games that I've already shown, I wanna capture footage for all those and have it in the episode. So wait for part two, it's coming soon. Anyways guys, until next time.